Welcome back to Kind of Funny's HBO's The Last of Us Breakdown. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes, and I'm joined by the new face of video games, Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. It can't be for nothing, Tim. It can't be for nothing. We also have the big daddy himself, Greg Miller. Endure and survive, Tim. Endure and survive. And joining us for what feels like his millionth Last of Us spoiler cast <laughs> here on Kind of Funny, it is Last of Us creator, Neil Druckmann. Hello, boys. Good to see you all. Good to see you, Neil. How are you feeling? Oh, man. Uh, it's such a weird question because I, what I should say, oh, my God, it feels amazing. The reception has been so good for the show. But somehow, and Craig is the same way, it just, it's just causing us anxiety as we think about where we need to go and what we need to do <laughs> and all the stuff that's in front of us. So awesome and full of anxiety <laughs> at the same time i i love about i love that so much thank you for spending your monday with us the the hours after the finale of last of us airing on hbo neil you're joining us thank you so much for that again thank you all for watching us whether it's live on youtube.com slash kind of funny or later on podcast services around the globe search for kind of funny screencast the latest in tv movie and trailers we're going to be right there for you if you want to get the show ad free patreon.com slash kind of funny is where you want to be just like our patreon producers Nathan Lamoth, Tripod Plus Plus, Trent Berry, James Hastings, and Casey Andrew have done. Today we're brought to you by Honey, but I'll tell you about that later. Neil, here we are, hours removed from the finale. You're saying you're, you're feeling a little anxious about the future, but what was your favorite moment of last night in particular? Ooh, um... I don't know if you're asking about the show or just my experience of watching the show. Your experience more than anything, I want to know. Yeah, uh, so I went over to Craig's house. Um, he has, like, this beautiful <laughs> in-house movie theater. Um, and I was there with Ashley and Troy and Merle and Hallie and Shannon. So it was kind of nice to, like, all these people that come from the game world that have entered the show. We were all watching it together, and we're crying and laughing together. And it was just, I was feeling very nostalgic of like just what a crazy journey this has been um and just i guess very thankful there's like when it ended uh i could see how proud they were and again nothing these past few months have made me feel more joy than seeing all the people that have dedicated years of their lives for this thing and how proud they are of the show did it feel um, comparable at all to releasing the game like this is interesting. Interestingly enough, your second time now releasing The Last of Us. How is it? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 Some would say. Four, well, four. Okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah. But like, how Maybe does it feel releasing this version of the game? <laughs> how does it feel releasing? Um, yeah, this version. It's it's very very similar um, in that you kind of have the same wants of wanting to make everybody that was on this journey proud. Uh, part of the anxiety is that you know when you, when you release a game, there's this like incredible high when everybody's playing it and talking about it, and then you crash, and then you have like this kind of postpartum. And now with the show, I got to have that experience week to week, like as I was releasing a, a game every week, and then seeing what the reaction will be, what people say, what will they think, what are they expecting to happen next? And um, yeah, it's just been a, just an amazing experience. I don't have quite, as you can tell, I don't have the words for it. I kind of, like, I'm kind of stumbling through this. Um, but it's it's just been, like, I love these characters in this world so much, so to see how much people love it, even outside of people I've worked on it, it's just been amazing. And um, every, every uh, Monday, my mom calls me, and she's like, oh, my God, like, uh, and she would ask me all these questions. And, like, last week's uh, uh, episode aired, and she was like, so is there supposed to be, like, a giraffe thing? Like, is that, ha is that the next season? When is that happening? I'm like, Mom, do you have any idea what I do? Like, for the past <laughs> 10 years, any idea what I've done? <laughs> Uh, but it's just been cool that she's been getting to experience it. And um, I have like a bunch of friends and family that have never played the game that now have an appreciation for The Last of Us. And it's, that's, been, that's been really cool. Neil, here's my question. Last time you were on Kind of Funny, and I believe this is correct. I can't imagine there was another one, but it was Last of Us Part 2 spoiler cast. We went through every detail of the uh, game, obviously. And that's what we're doing with the show here. But that, I felt, hit at such a different time. And I, my question for you is... Ha has the mainstream reaction to The Last of Us yeah, on HBO kind of refilled your cup? Like, Last of Us Part Two, right, came out, and it was divisive. And obviously, you guys want a reaction that was a big part of it. But, you know, talking to you and Troy and Ashley and Laura, there was this, like, man, we've kind of been through the ringer with this experience. And it is that kind of emotional tale. But 
to be here yeah. and it is like you know everybody jokes around on tiktok and twitter every time of like the non-gamers watching this show and the gamers being like you have no idea what's coming but it's been such a celebration i feel last of us has has that been something to wrestle with i have been kind of reflecting on that because yeah that period was a dark period um which was not only like the leaks that happened with part two and some of the reaction and some of like being caught in the middle of this media culture war in ways we couldn't even anticipate um at times that felt very overwhelming and add uh, let's not forget COVID on top of that yeah. that we weren't yeah. able to like celebrate with the team or do anything like in person so just everyone's kind of depressed and playing this depressing game <laughs> um and it has been a celebration and like like look i was nervous i i never released anything that will be reviewed by Hollywood um, journalists and talked about and kind of these mainstream channels. So I had no idea what to expect. Are they going to tear it apart more than game journalists? Uh, it turns out gamers are the most critical motherfuckers out there. So that, that, <laughs> that's quite easy in comparison. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, <laughs> I, I don't quite mean this the, the way it will sound, but it was like, oh, The Last of Us is cool again in a way that, you know, the conversation around part two was just so intense. I kind of forgot the, and it's hard not to focus on just the negative things that of people course. are saying. It's like you could get a hundred thousand people saying really positive things, and it just takes ten to say really negative things. For the way my mind works, is just fixate on those ten. Uh, but here, I guess the numbers were just so overwhelming. It was so positive, and the week-to-week -week conversation, the fan art, um, the cover. People doing like cover songs from like songs we would put on the show and like each episode, and you could tell the like the anticipation for every episode that's coming up. Um, it was just it was really cool. It was it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, so I, I want to know about the giraffe, like the moment in the game being so special, and then seeing it in the in the show and it being this like amazing moment that hits just as hard. Seeing that it's a real giraffe, <laughs> like like. So I want to hear about the real giraffe first. How was that? Yeah, that, that was because um, we're like just the logistics, like uh, the, 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 the weird thing with live action that's very different from games is, you know, games, we could just put a giraffe wherever we want and we don't have to worry about <laughs> unions or like um, <laughs> when oh, does the a giraffe, giraffe union is so tough. move or how do you like, so the, the, the crew actually built like a blue screen set in the Calgary Zoo. Oh, wow. um, and there's a giraffe there that the actors went and kind of acted there. And then there was a set replacement done after the fact. And then there are some shots that are CG. Um, but our uh, VFX team were so amazing. There's so much uh, VFX shots in the show that are just hard to tell our VFX. Um, just because how well done it was. So seeing the giraffe in, in real life and in, in the show and in the game, it's such an important moment. Like I, I can imagine seeing the actual giraffe and knowing like, wow, this is the giraffe. Were there moments for you on the set where you're like, wow, this is my creation and, it, and it's real? Every time I was on set, uh, I felt this way. Um, mm. I, I actually wasn't there. I, sadly, I wasn't there for the giraffe shoot, but Craig, whenever, whenever I wasn't there, would always send me videos and screens. and like, check this out. Oh, my God, look at this. And I'd just be like Bella petting the giraffe, and I'm just like watching this <laughs> video on my iMessage, just crying. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've talked about this a lot, but the first day I was on set, and it was um, shooting some of the Joel and Sarah stuff and Tommy at their house, like eating breakfast, and they had recreated... Joel's house. And again, the love and care that went into that recreation, um, the, the greatest of which was Sarah's room that I had to take like this, like I take to take a zoom call for Naughty Dog and I'm looking for a quiet place. So I just went to Sarah's room and I'm just showing the guys. I'm like, look at the beds, look at the sheets, look at the posters. And I'm just kind of geeking out. And then I'm like, okay, let me get serious. Cause I got to walk out the door and just give like people direction and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was, I was geeking out a lot, a lot, and I just had to kind of keep it under control and um, be professional. So going back to Greg's question a bit about refilling the cup, uh, seeing this version of The Last of Us, right, it being on the big screen, like Tim's talking about, right, like seeing the fact that you guys put a draft in the game and now like fast forward eight to ten years later, you have an actual set, people working with a draft to like make this moment happen. Uh, last week on Gamescast, we were talking a bit of the uh, Super Nintendo world and how it was Tamora Hussein who was talking about how he got to see Miyamoto kind of stand in like this thing that is the result of 
his creation, right? Many, many years ago, right? Sitting in, in the middle of like, oh shit, I made Mario happen. And now people are here physically enjoying Mario. For you, does that does the idea of now having the Last of Us TV show out, seeing it on the mainstream level, seeing it show up at SNL, does that do anything for you as a creative? Is do you are you in a place now where you're like, oh man, let's do more? Like I want to do everything now. Um, I don't know if I think about it like quite like that. Uh, look, it just it definitely opens opportunities, and there's. Um, I'm actually really excited. There's a lot of people I met on the show or are fans of the show that are now more interested in games and whether they're actors or directors or uh, directors of photography that are really interested in playing around in, in games. And I'm like, oh, that's the stuff I'm really curious of. Like, how do we leverage? How do we get more interesting talent to come help us make new, new kinds of games? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't I, I'm still taking it in. So I, I, I don't... Um, I don't have a desire to say, oh, the, the next game we make has to be adaptable to another medium. That's mm -hmm. it needs to be a theme park. <laughs> they make. say you're not playing for the theme park yet. <laughs> what you're saying? <laughs> I, I, look, I'd love, I'd love a Last of Us ride. That would be amazing. So if anybody out there wants to make it, please contact us. I'm sure um, Six Flags is beating that Hollywood Horror Nights, <laughs> baby. Uh, piggybacking off of that, Neil. Right, the question of creating this world and doing the stuff, and then now you. I mean, really crossing over, right? Like, I think at the end of every episode of The Last of Us, when the, you know, director studio comes up and it's you, Craig, and the cast talking about it, I think it was like, maybe it took five episodes, but for the majority of the time, every time Jen would turn to me and go, can you believe we know him? Like, it was so crazy to see you in that HBO, you know, inside the actor studio that we've seen so many different times. Do we have to worry about you leaving games and going full Hollywood on us? I don't think so. I, I love games too much. Um, look, I, I definitely have the bug, and I, and I like playing in this other world now. Um, but my first love is games. Uh, so I'm really curious about how do I take a lot of the lessons I've learned and how do we apply them on games, whether it's from a production standpoint or a creative standpoint or even a writing standpoint. There's a lot that I learned on the show um, that I'm very excited to have been since I came to back to, to Naughty Dog and been doing stuff. Um, but no, I'm not, I'm not going to go full Hollywood. Okay. What would you say is the biggest lesson you learned? Good question. Um, weirdly organization. Um, there's like the, the production pipeline for a TV show like this was is so streamlined and so efficient and the gates they kind of have to go through where we are a bit more, um, you know, we fly more by the seat of our pants when we, we make stuff at Naughty Dog. And that, that's part of, that is part of our superpowers that we, we're very nimble and we could like pivot very e easily. But I think we can be more organized. And I think that would just help us be more efficient with how much content we can create. But more so than that, even help with the work life balance stuff that we've been working on for the past few years. I think there's a lot to learn there. When it comes to remaking the story of The Last of Us in, in a different medium, months after I don't know the timelines of this is wrong but release months after the remake of Last mm -hmm. of Us Part 1 was there a, a a time where you guys made the decision that the remake of Part 1 was going to be as faithful as it was and not adapt some of the show elements that you you put for the the show Yeah for me um I wasn't as involved with with the remake but um from a high level standpoint it was important to that we didn't use this as an opportunity to reinvent what The Last of Us was. It was just to like, let's get closer to the original vision um, as much as possible, which is, and sometimes I, I know that that frustrated certain fans that they wanted prone or they wanted dodge, but I felt that would have created a different game. Um, so it was important to just keep the feel of it and the feel could be like mechanical feel or emotional feel um, and just plus it in every possible way. There's little things um, like we added the Mortal Kombat 2 poster into Ellie's room, but that felt relatively benign and we weren't making drastic changes uh but yeah it was it was very important to remain to like plus it uh it'll be able to introduce it to a new audience but not radically change it for the changes you made in the in the show were they changes that you've had in your mind before maybe even originally for the game or were the majority of the the big differences things that you're like i'm making a show this has to be different so let's come up with how it works better here yeah when when um, when I started working with uh, Craig, uh, 
I, I have to back up for a second. So like when I saw Chernobyl, I was blown away. Um, just the, how well written that show is, the tone of it. Um, and it's really, it's dealing with, uh, this is a really challenging thing. It, it deals with really heavy subject matter and makes it engaging. Um, so it, it's not just like a downer the whole time, even though like parts of it are a downer. Uh, that I, I, I knew if, if I'm going to bring someone that talented, like into the world of The Last of Us, I have to trust them. And that means I, I've never made a TV show. I don't know how to make a TV show. I, I know how to tell a story. I know how to write stuff. But, you know, it, it was done for this other medium that often has different requirements and needs than a TV show that I entered it with a very open mind to say any idea that is pitched will be fully considered, no matter how radical or crazy it is. Um, and then we should let, let the idea live or die by its own merits. Uh, is it helping us tell the story authentically to what the story is, to how that story made you feel, not necessarily making it identical, um, but for this other medium. And that required certain changes. Um, the most obvious is which is probably the removal of a lot of the action sequences that are required for a game, you know, when you need mechanical mastery and you're using those tools to create certain tensions or to create immersion that had we translated those directly for the TV show, I believe it would have made it for, um, it would have made pretty boring sequences. Um, so instead we said, okay, well, let's focus on what makes The Last of Us really stand out in this genre that, you know, there's so many like stories in this zombie genre, post-apocalypse genre. But what makes us special is just the relationships between Joel and Ellie, between Bill and Frank, between um, Henry and Sam. Uh, that's, that's the consistent thing of The Last of Us. So that's where most of our effort should go. You're talking about staying true to it, expanding on it, doing this. This is a spoiler cast about this show. So talk to me about the finale. Well, you know, we did our review of it a couple hours ago, available everywhere, screencast. Uh, and one of the things I was not not surprised by and not let down by, but left wanting for was I loved how the first episode, which I know is the first two kind of combined or whatever, but our first uh, HBO episode expanded on what we already knew. And we got to see, you know, Ellie uh, be tied to the radiator. We got to see more of what was going on behind the scenes here and there. Was there a desire? Was there a script ever for the finale to get more into what was happening uh, with the fireflies? What was happening after they knocked out Joel? What went in there? Cause I think, it was so powerful in the beginning of that first episode to see beyond Joel's perspective, but then mm. this felt very traditional to what we had in the game. Yeah, uh, not really. Um, there was variations of, of scenes. There was more and less for like the Anna scene in the beginning, and sure. we talked quite, quite a bit about that. So to us, that was the expansion, was the Ellie's mom scene mm -hmm. and getting to flesh up Marlene. And by doing that, then hopefully the Marlene stuff that happens later in the episode has more impact because you get to see how close she was to Anna. Um, but beyond that, we were um, we didn't want any bloat, especially at the end. It was important that once like we get close to the end, it just like the moments hit one after the other, and it feels like you're just like you're like Joel, you're going on this rush where it's like you can't even like think and contemplate too much. It's just things are just happening. Um, and then you're at the end, and the end catches you off guard. That we, again, we didn't have a lot of conversation about it, but my feeling would be like if had we expanded it too much, um, it could have ruined that that feeling that we were after. So you you've been so close to this franchise for a decade plus now, and there's been uh, so many kind of expansions on it in ways that probably you didn't even know were going to happen. Like I'm sure you didn't always know there was going to be a part two. But having part one end in 2013, knowing where part two goes in 2020, and then here being able to get another chance at uh, doing the, the story in a different way, with those final shots, with the end of, the, uh, of where Ellie is as a character, in your mind and with the way that it's been portrayed, do you think that those are all the same from the inside, from Ellie's perspective, that like the, what she believes is going on when she says okay, does that okay mean the same thing? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, while this, like, Ellie and Joel are different at times and, um, you know, deviates and have experienced different things, that, that, that moment, we very much, the conversation that Craig and I had was very reflective of what we were going for in the game. Um, and Craig loved the ending so much, he didn't want to mess with it. Um, 
beyond just maybe very practical things of where the sunlight is or what what is the forest we have in front of us um those sometimes will require changes of where you put the camera or pacing or, or editorial choices like that but he very much wanted to keep the ending intact from the game i like, love that because yeah the conversation we were having today on the show was the idea that in the <clears throat> in the game ashley's performance and ellie in the game felt like okay like I don't believe you, but I love you, and I'm going to let this go, or at least try to let it go. Whereas the scene last night, right, with Bella felt a little bit like, okay, I don't believe you, and I love you, but I can't let this go. Or it, feel, it felt like there was something more brewing with her. We obviously are going to the same destination with both. It just felt like a difference in the portrayal. I mean, that, that's the nature of having different actors interpret sure. the material and just how they perform it. It's just what feels natural for them in the moment. Well, that was the same way, I think, when we were talking about, uh, you know, Pedro's Joel versus, you know, uh, Troy's Joel in the game, where, you know, when we were playing Joel and we were killing Firefly after Firefly after Firefly and dying and restarting and doing the whole thing and trying to figure out the right route, like, you're so hung up on it that I don't think you realize how fucked up that is. Whereas last night watching, it was like, oh, this is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I really liked all the uh, the part two kind of teases or like teases isn't even the right word kind of like just setting of like you know mm -hmm. uh, seeing jackson and it being uh, as fleshed out as, as it was here getting introduced to some of the characters or like hinted at and all that um what were some of your your what was the the intention behind that and like where did you decide to like draw the line of like for the finale not going too far and dispelling things out yeah um you know, when we're making The Last of Us, the, the first game, um, the way games are written is a little bit different, where on TV show, at least the way Craig likes to work and HBO, is there's most of the writing is done before we enter production. So we know exactly what we're making, and the different directors we bring in can start their pre-production process with uh, close to final scripts. On the game, because we're finding the fun, we're finding the how would you make the, these mechanics engaging and there's a theoretical element to it that you then have to prove we write as we go and constantly the writing is being inspired and influenced by where the mechanics land so you know I've, i think i've talked to, uh, about this in the past like ellie ne used to not kill anybody until the end of the story and just with the way the mechanics were coming together just we couldn't sustain that and it felt like you didn't care as much about ellie so the story changed where she killed very early on so she could be engaged with you in the combat loops. Um, sorry, what was the question? I, just, I went on this track and I-, I The Last of Us 2, uh, like oh, the, yeah, the yeah, seeds uh, towards it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, as we're writing, we can kind of like go back in time and like adjust things early on and then jump around. So we can, once we know where the story's going, we can work backwards from there and lay a lot of setups and track towards that ending. But we can only do it so much because we don't know where the story goes afterwards. Um, so then we make Last of Us 2 and we try to, the best we can to make it all consistent and to say, okay, here are things that felt like set up that we could pay off later in, in the story. When we're making the show, we know Left Behind, we know Last of Us Part 2. So there are things like we could have Marlene talk about Riley early on because we have a better understanding of who Riley is because Left Behind has already come out. We know where a lot of this, this the season two and three will go. So we could start laying things in earlier. And to uh, Tim, I think this was your question earlier, of like, are there things that we wanted to do that end up not making the game? One of the things we wanted to do in the game and just couldn't do it because we ran out of time and money is we wanted to go into Jackson. So if you look at the Last of Us 1 art book, there's all this concept art of the inside of Jackson because that's where we originally wanted to do. And then we couldn't pull it off. So it felt like the show gave us this other opportunity. It's like, well, it actually makes more sense to go into Jackson instead of the dam to show this thriving society. And here's this thing that you could come back to. Um, and once we're already inside, well, it makes sense to show Shimmer, or it makes sense to show like some of the locations so from Last of Us Part Two, or this um, cameo that might or might not be this character that everybody thinks it is. <laughs> it better, <laughs> be, it's better that, be Neil. Like, even not that one. I've seen something going around uh, from the finale of it. There, there's a shadowy, seemingly braided figure running oh. off. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll kill that rumor. That is not Abby. Okay, there yeah. we go. Thank you, thank you yeah. very much for that. There's a kind of funny games daily headline for yeah. you for tomorrow. <laughs> you. So, how was the balance thematically? Right, Tim's talking about the seeds that you put in there toward Last's Part Two, right, and conveying that in, in future seasons. 
Last of Us Part 1 versus 2 feel like thematically they're in very different places, right? Last of Us 1 feels very hopeful and loving. And I know in, in your guys' like podcast and in the post shows for Last of Us, you guys talk about like, yeah, Last of Us this season is about love, right? In every episode, we want to portray the idea of love between two characters, right? Whether it's Bill and Frank or Henry and Sam or Joel and Ellie or whatever, like makeup of the characters, right? We want to portray the idea of love versus... Last is part two feels so rooted in the idea of the cycle of violence and vengeance and rage. And there's very different tones, I feel like, between the two games. Were, was there care taken in figuring out how to seed in the elements from Last of Us part, uh, part two into part one without losing sort of the soul of what makes part one part one? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's an astute kind of observation that... Um we talked a lot about not only the first game, but the second game and what do those relationships look like and what, what is the motivation for a lot of this stuff in the second game? I assume we could just go full spoiler here. Everybody here is like mm. gamer. And, um, that in those conversations, we talked a lot about, even though the second game is more about this obsessive pursuit of justice, um, the motivation for it is still love. Um, it's, it's, it's like, how far would you go to avenge the one you love? Um, so therefore, going back into the show and knowing that's like a, a, a major theme in the second story, that there was ways to start hinting at it and speak to that theme, that, that this idea of love um, can lead to wonderful and terrible things. And it was always part of the DNA of The Last of Us. It's just the ratios were a bit different that you're right. The first game is a bit more of a positive expression of love, like including someone, protecting them, making sure they feel safe and they have a bright future in front of them. Um, whereas the second game is more about the destructive nature of love, of like destroying things to try to honor this person that you love. Um, but it was important to say, it's all a bit messy. There's, a, there's some uh, a percentage of both in both stories. It's just the percentage just flips as we get um, into, into part two. What was your favorite part of working on the show? Was it more the, the, the producing side of it? You got to direct an episode? Like, what, what element was your favorite? Mm. Good question. I never thought about that. Um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's very similar to games. That, and there's different people that like different parts of production. Um, I tend to enjoy the very, very beginning where it's blue sky and we can talk like anything goes. And it's like when anything go, it's really hard to make choices. But those early choices you make feel very thrilling. It's like the, the thing takes shape. And then I like the very, very end when it all comes together and you're putting, you're putting the finishing touches. And it's like, it's like when you feel like it's already good and you're on the verge of making it great. And it's like, oh, if we just put this Gustavo theme right here and we oh. duck the audio down, okay, that makes it way more interesting. Um, or seeing the VFX starting to come together. So I would say, yeah, my mind probably jumps between those two. The middle is the, is the worst. Um, when you've shot everything and you're starting to edit stuff, uh, it's the same as the middle of a game where your game is first all strung together and it's a piece of shit. And you're like, <laughs> you just question everything. You're like, did we just make all the wrong choices to end up here? Um, but then you do this enough and you have to trust the process to say, okay, no, it's just when you first string it together, it's rough. And then it's about polishing and refining and iterating. And, um, it was, it was, I already knew this from games because so much of the story can be found in the edit, but even more so I saw it exemplified in, in the show of like, we would shape entire scenes by just like re-editing them and rethinking them and you know sometimes even having reshoots to like add little snippets of things that we didn't quite have uh, material that we needed were there uh bits that you really wanted to make work from the game in the show that you ended up having to scrap at any of those levels um Specifically, the hit wrong. hanging was, upside down. I was gonna say, it's specific. <laughs> Neil, answer this. Answer me this. All right. Do you? Believe I, love, I love that every week this came up. We're like, okay, the next week they're gonna do the hanging upside down. <laughs> okay, no, the next week. Okay, they're clearly gonna hang him up upside down at a hospital somewhere because they have to do the hanging upside down. I fucking missed. I whiffed on it today because I wanted to do at the end the, during the screencast. Be like, you caught the Easter egg at the end, right? Which would just be him hanging for no reason. <laughs> Is that an iconic <laughs> moment to you, Neil? The hanging upside down of Joel. <gasps> Absolutely. Um, there's Thank a bunch you. of iconic moments that I love from the game that just didn't make sense 
for this version of the story of the show. Um, there's the hanging upside down. There's the falling on the rebar yeah. where like Ellie is leading you now and we take away your mechanics and she's screaming at you and she's she, by trying to protect you. She's being angry and you see her kill a bunch of people for the first time. I love that sequence. It's one of my favorites from the game. It just didn't make sense for the show because just the body count, if we had done it the same, it just would have felt off. It would have felt weird. It would have felt less realistic than how grounded we're making the show. Um, I hear you on the, on the snare trap sequence. We'll put a lot of thought of it into, into the next season. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, my big thing is, I, and I've been getting a lot of shit for this uh, from people online because I said that it's, it's iconic. Like, that is one of the iconic moments of Last of Us. We're like, I don't know, whatever, it's story beats. I'm like, yo, the story beats are iconic, but that is too. So I appreciate that you've confirmed what I thought, Greg Miller. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. We stand down. <laughs> the non-iconic side stands down. I love it, man. Uh, so now here we are with Last of Us Season 1 done, Season 2 announced. It's, it's coming, and obviously you're still working on games. Are, are you taking care of yourself? Are you worried that you're taking on too much with, with everything? Yeah, I'm a little worried. Um, there's, <laughs> there's definitely times where I feel burnt out. Um, but I, I'm lucky that I work with um, a lot of people that I could trust, that I could uh, give stuff to, like... Um, Obviously, my partner, Naughty Dog, Evan Wells, um, and we have a whole leadership group now that's been expanded um, that they take care of stuff when I'm not around. Um, there's more creative directors and game directors in Naughty Dog that can take care of stuff and more writers when I'm not around. And likewise, on the show, um, you know, uh, Craig was the primary showrunner. I was co-showrunner with him, but he was there on set way more than me. So it, it is about trying to strike the right balance. But uh, I do have to take some stuff off my plate pretty soon, I think. You, you talked about a bit of the stress er earlier on. Uh, for you, is there a pressure to make another Last of Us, right? Like, I feel like Naughty Dog in the last about decade, decade and a half has had an Uncharted and a Last of Us, and now this Uncharted movie and a Last of Us TV show, uh, all of which are very successful. Do you feel like you got to keep hitting these home runs? Like, I got to make another Last of Us to, like, be another big IP that PlayStation can promote and support in this way? I am very lucky that I don't have to think like that, that um, I, I joined a studio that was already so successful that we could be kind of prima donnas and just do whatever we want. Um, I know not everybody has that, that, that privilege, but it's, it's not something I take lightly. So it's like at the end of every project, we, we purposefully uh, explore several different projects. Um, some of them would might be a sequel and then a bunch of new ideas. And then we really feel like where where do our passions lie? Because that's the fire that has to keep like you that has to sustain for years to come. And if you pick the wrong projects and then you burn out from that idea because you weren't that passionate about it two years into it of, of, on a four year project, you're fucked. Um, that's how you, I think, make mediocre anything uh, if you're not if, if you lose your excitement for it. So. Um, I know the fans really want Last of Us Part 3. <laughs> I hear about it all the time. Um, and and all, all I could say is that, uh, look, we're already into our next project. Um, so the decision has already been made. I can't say what it is, but that's the process we went through, that there was a lot of consideration of different things, and we picked the thing we were most excited for. And Factions is somewhere in there. Not that I'm fishing. I'm not fishing. I'm just saying we're still getting Factions. The Last of Us multiplayer game is our next big title, um, and you will hear much more about it later this year, and I'm stoked for it. It's, um, Same. It's, that, that one's a, like an interesting experience for me personally because this is the first Last of Us game that I'm not the primary writer, I'm not the director, so I get to see it more from the side and play more of a producer role and more of a mentor role, and that to me is really exciting. What the team has put together is so cool. And again, it's, it's very different than what I would do because it's made by different people. But that to me is part of the exciting is to get to see other people play in this world in a leadership role um, and see how it comes together. Uh, I, yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to be able to show it off. No, we can't either. Again, going back to the, the pressure thing, right? Not to like stress you out this entire episode, but for <laughs> season two, we talk about again, like back in 2020, that game comes out in a depressing time. It's a very like <laughs> depressing game, right? Fantastic game, but it is emotionally taxing. And you saw the divisiveness and like some and howls received by uh, a lot of people. 
is that a thing that stresses you out for the TV show, like going into mm-hmm. the future seasons, you know, coming off of season one, which has been across the board, everybody loves it, you know, we're loving it, it's getting good reviews and all this stuff. Do you worry, I guess, from a, just from a stress level about season two and the future of The Last Wish show? Not really. Um, I mean, I, I stress about just making something that's good. I, I don't stress as much about whether as many people will like it or not. Uh, my, my thought process is always kind of like what I was talking before. It's like, we got to make something we're passionate about. That's, that's the highest um, priority for us. Um, whether people like it or not, that's out of our control. I, sure. I, 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 can't, I can't control that. And, and, and if I try to like, and try to engineer something that I think, okay, okay, here's a story that the most people will like, I'm bound to fail because now I'm no longer making decisions based on my own gut. I'm trying to second guess someone else's gut or someone else's taste. Uh, I, I, in my experience, that, that, that leads to failure. My, my motivation is always like, look, I want this thing to be successful for the people that pay our bills. Um, right? I want PlayStation to be really profitable from all of our games. I want HBO to make bank on this show so they feel comfortable to trust us to just do whatever we want to do next and give us the right budget and time to do it properly. So I do care about success from that respect, but um, not that it needs to achieve the same kind of success or the same broad success that season one has achieved. Jumping off of that, like something that I, I, I just love that we're in this timeline, because when this show was announced a couple years ago, you know, that was at a different time when it came to video game adaptations and hearing about movies, hearing about shows, they'd get announced sometimes and we'd be like, sure, I'll believe it when I see it. Here we are now, years later, we've seen this show. It happened. And not only did it happen, it was on HBO. It got the premier flagship Sunday night spot. Craig Mazin was involved. You directly, Neil, were involved in this way more than we normally see game adaptations uh, at all. Gustavo was involved. This felt just so authentically Last of Us. It felt like it was every single thing that needed to line up for this to be a success happened, and then you brought the passion and talent to like commit to that. Are you seeing now with the success of this, I imagine many awards are going to be won from this, the Emmys, the this, the that, all that. Does that excite you for season two where you're like, "We, we came to the plate, home run now we get to go even bigger there is look the 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 second game um from set piece from the number of characters from how complicated complex the story is is more ambitious than the first game and uh the success of the first season absolutely affords us you know bigger budget more time um those are the things that are important to like do it properly so right so we can consider the scripts consider the people we're bringing to be part of our team consider the pre-production um i i am very i am very very excited for the stuff we have planned for the for the second season that um especially for people that wanted more infected uh <laughs> well just get ready <laughs> Hell yeah. That's awesome. So I know, uh, real, real quick, I, I, don't, I don't go for it, Greg. Go no, for no, it. I'm screwing with you. Go with it. All right. uh, I know, obviously, the, the, no, nothing's confirmed yet. You don't know anything, but we, we've seen a lot of talk from different interviews and stuff that season two will not be the entirety of part two at the very least. Do you and Craig and anyone else involved have it in your, in your, in your minds? Do you know the answer? Like, do you know what season two is going to be already? uh yes to a large degree um and and some ideas of this the following season but even though that that's way kind of looser um, is that confirmed is the season three locked in yet no we're, we're only renewed for season two um but you know we we've gone on the record to say that that game two is bigger than one season yeah tie hbo's hands they have to do it uh i'm sure they'll want to too and so uh, this is a weird one right i feel like I've interviewed you so many times, Neil, for video games, and that's always a harder one to look into the future of. But to- wait, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Do you remember the first time we spoke? I was thinking about that today. On camera or like just in general? Just in general. It was an interview. It was on the phone. Oh, for Beyond? And well, do you remember what project it was for? Um, Jack and Dexter. No, was it Uncharted 2? Uh, it was around Uncharted 2. It was for the Uncharted motion comic. Oh. <laughs> that was the Avenger. most Greg Miller thing ever. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were like, this guy sucks in interviews. I'll never talk to him again. Here we are, <laughs> decades later. Um, but yeah, when I talk to you about projects... I interrupted your question. No, no, I love it. I'm, I love a good throwback. God, I forgot all about that. Was the interview good? Did you enjoy it? 
I don't know. I think I was too nervous to like, I, it was like one of my first interviews. I'm sure. like, oh. Did you know who I was at the time? We're like, oh my God, Greg Miller. Oh, I'll be a star. And this guy. Of course. You're, you're Greg Miller. The Greg Miller. Here's, uh, you were like, oh, I'll never be bigger than this guy. And here you're fucking Hollywood bowl at I the Grove. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever my stupid jokes were today. No. Um, my question for you, uh, with video games, usually it's, uh, first off, I know super annoying when you guys release a game or are about to release a game and then everybody's like, and what about the next thing? And you're like, that's five years, six years, that could completely change, blah, 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 blah. For this one, it feels weird to talk to you about the show because we already know, obviously, what happens in part two, let alone that season two's already been announced. So I have three questions about season two that aren't, I swear, gotcha questions. They're just, obviously, educated questions because we know the game and the material so well. And so I'll start with this. When Last of Us Part Two came out originally, you have, of course, Pearl Jam's Future Days in there. An amazing song that is like the narrative backbone of the entire thing. We keep coming back to it in heartbreaking ways and doing all these things. I remember when the game dropped, internet sleuths came for you. Like, well, actually, that song wouldn't have been out yet because of this, because of the way Outbreak Day happened. And you said, well, actually, they performed it live. Joel was such a super fan. He watched the video and memorized it and learned how to play it. Do you have, are you, are you going to try to pull this? This feel like a gotcha question. Keep going. But I, <laughs> I, my question is like, are you going to have to, since the different timeline now, are you, for, for, are you already thinking for part two? Are you going to have to replace that song? Are you going to have some other narrative answer for it? Or do you not want to answer this question? I understand. Uh, I can tell you, we haven't made a decision. It, it, we have talked about it for those exact reasons that you've mentioned that um, now it makes no sense for Joel to know that song. Now we could say, okay, it's a parallel dimension totally. and the song came out earlier and there's, there's ways, but that feels a little bit like a cheat. Um, I, I will say that Pearl Jam specifically um, has now like even more so like been ingrained into the, the story in the world of the last of us that if we don't do that song, well, there's other songs that we could play with. Yeah, like 2003's uh, Get Low by Lil Jon no, the East no, Side no, Boys. No, That's a good one. Yeah. Instead, just have Eddie Vedder survive, then he teaches Joel the song, and there you go. He learned it on the road. You know. Uh, I want to I wanna get to your question in just a sec, Greg. Two more! I have two more! Two more questions, but before we do that, let's get a word from our sponsors. Shout out to Honey for sponsoring this episode. Honey is the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. And we all know there's nothing better than the feeling of saving money. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds, you see the fun little dancing guy. Honey searches for coupons and it finds you the best ones and then you just watch the prices drop we here at kind of funny have been using honey for years and it's helped us save thousands on tech costumes food you name it honestly i just love how easy it is to just set and forget and save that's the best part honey doesn't just work on desktops it works on your phone too you just activate it on safari on your phone you save on the go if you don't already have honey you could be straight up missing out you can get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny all right so my next season two question that i swear isn't trying to spoil because we know what the fucking show you know, for season one, you guys went above and beyond, I think, in honoring Troy and Ashley and getting that, you know, having Troy be such a big part of the David episode, have Ashley also be such a big part of last night's episode. Both of them kill it, crush it, be so amazing. Let alone, um, uh, help me out. Laura Bailey? No, well, I'm getting, that's the question yeah. I'm going to. I'm thinking of Merle. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my question then becomes, though, yeah, for Laura Bailey last night. Uh, of course, it was a big tweet storm last night. When like, oh man, Laura Bailey was one of the doctor, one of the nurses, one of the doctors in the, in the room last night. That's awesome. Blah 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 blah. And then of course, you put up the amazing tweet of the text she sent you or whatever, <laughs> posing over the dead body. My question that I is more leading than I want it to be, but was that a cameo or was that an introduction of a character? I guess like is and I mm. I, I know that uh, again, just like games, you've not made season two, so who knows what will actually end up on the screen, but. Was that a, hey, Laura, come be a friend and be in the background? Or was that, hey, Laura, you, you don't get killed in this episode or even flashbacks or whatever? Yeah, so I, I will say um, 
Laura played one of the nurses in the last in the first game, and since then we've changed, we recast that role, so you don't hear her voice twice. Um, but it, it was more honoring what she did in the first game. Gotcha. Um, we need to honor the the obviously the great work she did in in the, in the second game, and I think in a different way. Excellent. And then the conversation we had over and over again today, talking about season two and the fact that the news are, I guess. Yeah, news. The quotes have been put out that you guys think it's two seasons for, or it's more seasons than just one season. Do you think, and I know this is, again, way more detail than you probably would want to give, but are you going to try to follow the same narrative structure? Do you think you have to shake it up for TV versus a video game? This is something we went around and around on this morning of how us, people who don't make anything, <laughs> would, <laughs> would take and translate the the video game and the two major parts and the big break point. And is it, is, that, is it that simple of a season two and a season three, or do you try to integrate all the way through or whatever you're comfortable saying on that? Yeah, it's um, this, the structure of the story is obviously a big part of that story. Um, so I could tell you that a lot of our conversations are about structure and where do we put things. And um, I, 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 I can't say too much about that. Sure, of course. I, I, I could just say that the process is very, very similar to, to the first season, which is first just like kind of talking through the story as it stands and then starting to talk about well, what are things we would want to keep exactly the same? What are things that just logistically aren't going to work? Um, and need to change. And what are some other things that, um, you know, Craig might have ideas of wanting to change things because he feels like they might be better, it might be different, or something, some theme or idea he's really excited by that I always try to honor again because that's, he's my partner on this. Um, and then we, we, our process is like, we talk it through. Um, so to say, okay, I want to make this big, let's say a, a big change here. Uh, like, let's say, you know, like the Bill and Frank is a great example of that. Um, that, that was a really big change. And like, okay, keep an open mind the fate of the character is different. So at first I might like irk or in some, in some defensive way, but uh, what does that mean? So talk through the episode and then talk through the ripple effect, both before and after what that means for the story. And if it feels like we end up in a better place, then we will make that change. Um, so we've already gone through a lot of that with, with the upcoming season. And um, I will say some of the things that are different is some of the stuff I'm most excited for. Okay. Thank you. We have a question from the chat from Havoc Maker saying, uh, if you're taking, oh God, there, can you pull it up real quick? Um, did Tess know that Joel tried to kill himself or is that something oh. that only Ellie learns? That's a good question. I don't, we've never discussed that. So now you're just asking for my interpretation because there isn't like a, a yeah, if you don't see it, then there's no fact. And it's to just add to that, the uh, Havoc Maker in Twitch chat asked, I, uh, does Tommy and or Tess uh, know Joel had attempted suicide or was Ellie the only one who he opened up to about it? I believe that Ellie, uh, what we saw in the last episode is the first time he's ever talked about. Wow. It. Interesting. Wow. Talking a bit more about things that you probably can't talk about, right? Regarding the future of it. Um, last is part two versus last is part one in terms of how the themes could translate from game to TV show. I'm curious on if you guys have thought about the I, uh, Last of Us Part Two is a video game thematically, and what that game does as a video game versus what Last of Us Part One does. Because when I think of Last of Us Part Two for me, I think a lot about Shadow Colossus as a parallel, where mm -hmm. a lot of Last Last of Us Part Two, I'd say, works and is moving because you're the one that is taking place, or you're you're the one that is taking control of those actions, right? Like you're the one that's killing a lot of people, you're the one that's playing as Ellie, you're the one that's spoilers playing as, as Abby doing all these things. In a similar way that, for me, Shadow Colossus is a game all about taking control as a player and purely t purely committing these acts because the game is asking you to and then getting to the end being like, oh, God, what have I done? Is that a thing that um, you guys have talked about yet in terms of Last is Part 2 and why it works as a game versus how that same story could work as a television show? Is that a thing that... You guys considered changing up at all from that regard, or is that a thing where it's like, you know, the translation could work just as well in the same way that season one, the first game, has worked very well translating it to TV? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I love Shadow of the Colossus, and it's, it's what it makes you feel. It's often very unique to video games. It makes you feel guilt and being complicit and dest destroying these beautiful creatures. Um, they're it's it's never going to be quite the same. 
Um, and I can talk about our process for season one, and you could probably translate that onto season two. Um, you know, there's the, the winter sequence where you first play as Ellie. And almost every focus that, sort of, that got to that part says instinctively, oh my God, I'm Ellie. Um, when they didn't know that was going to happen. And you watch them play differently. And there's a, something that's happened there that, again, I don't have the words to articulate it, but there's a certain like empathic connection that the player and the, char the character have immediately. And I think for that kind of stuff, there's a bit more heavy lifting that has to happen with a TV show that the way you shoot things, how long you spend with a character, how do you make the act of viewing it passively feel more like you're connected with that character? You're seeing it from their point of view. Um, and that's why, you know, we placed Left Behind where we did and we, um, the way that the eighth episode, the, the David episode was done in such a way so you feel like you're with Ellie more. Um, and that's the kind of process we would apply for how the second game is structured. Do you guys, uh, have you guys thought about what if the game or what if the, the TV show catches up to where the game is, right? Like if years from now we get the full story of part two and we get to the end of that story is there a plan like are you would you ever be down to make original content for the tv show because you've surpassed where the game's at i don't think so uh, i i could tell you the the what craig and i want to do and the deal we have is um only goes up to game two um and that's it and i i purposefully wanted to, things to be that way because i didn't want to end up in a Game of Thrones situation where like now you're forced to do something you might not feel comfortable with. But we're talking about years from now yeah. and who knows where my mind will be or Naughty Dog's mind will be or Craig's mind will be. So I, I can't definitively answer that question by Kelly. Right now, there's no plan to do anything beyond adapting the games. With that, the idea of adapting a game to TV, a game that, that you created and then a TV show you created with, with the help of others, of course, if you were to make a, if, if, the, if there was to be a show and then you were adapting that show to a game, would that be exciting to you? <laughs> make the Chernobyl. Well, on some level, because I've never done that. So anytime you're doing something new, it, it seems thrilling. Uh, and I feel like there's a lot to learn in that. Just, again, seeing how Craig's mind was working and how he approached the adaptation process, I... I it was thrilling. Anytime you see someone that's really good at something work and you get to see kind of the, the behind the scenes of it, uh, I, I, I really enjoy that. But um, as you can tell, I haven't given that much thought because that's not in the cards for us right now. But yeah, sure, that, that could be exciting. Very exciting. Very, Very exciting. exciting. I have a question for you. During the ad break, uh, you brought up the Mario movie. Are you excited for the Mario movie? Oh my God, I'm thrilled <laughs> for the Mario movie. Um, I Look, I... Sorry, PlayStation people, don't hate me, but I, I was a Nintendo fanboy when I grew up. My brother was the PlayStation guy. So I had the N64, he had the PlayStation. Uh, I, I'm a Mario diehard through and through. Uh, I've played like every mainline Mario game, completed it in any way you can complete it. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for the movie. It looks so good. <laughs> it looks so good. I watched that trailer like a hundred times this weekend, man. Uh, By the way, I, I took I took my kids um, to uh, Super Nintendo World, um, and got to do the Mario Kart ride with them, and they they loved it. But I'm like, I don't think you guys have the appreciation of what this thing is. Like, you get to just experience it from a very young age. Like, I had to wait till I was in my mid forties to do this. <laughs> Has it settled in? Like the the impact of what I'd say this year is for video game adaptations. Like, of course, we've had, especially over the last few years, vi very good video game adaptations come out between things like, um, you know, Sonic or Detective Pikachu Arcane. or Arcane. And uh, I'll just say The Witcher, even though I know The Witcher is more off the book. Um, but this year, us getting The Last of Us HBO show, which has, again, been very well received, and then getting the Super Mario Brothers movie, which, you know, it, like th that back-to-back -back feels insane for quality video game adaptations is that a thing that you've like had the time to sit and receive i haven't had a lot of time to reflect on it too much but it is that was one of my goals um in wanting to do this is i've been so disappointed with so many video game adaptations and i feel like it just kind of colors 
the industry in this bad light because people see a bad adaptation and like, oh, that's what video games are. Mm. It's just like poorly written stories um, with a lot of mindless action. Uh, that in doing something that, again, has more heart or more care or more love from the people high up down for the source material that we could kind of shift the thinking of how you do these things. And um, if you do it properly, that the audience will show up and they'll love it. And a new audience will show up as well and they'll love it. And the way they'll talk about it and revere it will help create more of these things. And there'll be like um, this kind of snowball effect. Um, so I, I think that was already happening before even The Last of Us, like you, all the stuff you mentioned. Like when I saw Sonic 1, I was like, okay, this is not the story of the game, but they've captured, somehow they've captured the essence of the game. I, uh, when I'm, I'm watching like the Dr. Robotnik fight at the end, I'm like, oh, it feels like I'm watching one of those boss fights, but it, it felt earned like in, in, in a really cool way. Um, and that's why I'm excited for Mario and um, more things that are coming. There's a lot of stuff coming from PlayStation production that I'm really excited to see. Gran Turismo, it, Twisted Metal, let's go! God of War! <laughs> I was going to say, is there, is there like any internal like competition where it's like you know they're making the god of war show is there like a oh man all right there that's probably gonna be a banger too now we got to go back and forth because i feel like you guys and i don't know if you've talked about this but sony santa monica and naughty dog i'm sure a lot of people will look at it as like oh man these are the like the playstation like prestige they're putting out these cinematic stories that sit that sit with people right and you guys have this i think very fun and very cool back and forth is that gonna shift into video game or into tv do you think I'd be surprised if it didn't, because, uh, you know, Corey and I banter quite a bit, uh, sometimes publicly. Uh, but I, look, I, I know how hard these things are. So right now I'm like, OK, well, hopefully the show, our show somehow helps you convince them to, to do a certain process or how to write it or whatever. But once things get going, you can bet there will be a lot of bantering and like friendly competition that like yeah. we have with the games. Uh, one of the last questions I have for you here, going back to the the finale with the opening scene um, with Ashley Johnson playing Ellie's mom, um, that is a scene that you've talked about in the past, like after Last of Us One, um, as you, you had the idea of it. How close was what we saw to the original concept, and how much of that was more like I want to get Ashley involved, and I want to have this moment between the Ellies? Um, very close. Uh, there were because there were also a different version of that story that you know some had more action, some less action. Um, but it was always like the major beats of uh, arriving at this farm, uh, giving birth while being um, infected, not sure you cut the umbilical cord at the right time, and then Marlene showing up too late and seeing this kind of friendship between Marlene and, and Anna. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm reminded now, actually, because uh, I've talked about in an interview now that there was there was a, 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 a much more full version of this story that went more back in time um, that was going to be made into a video game by not by Naughty Dog, by a different game studio that uh, Greg Miller introduced me to that studio. And we had talked to them for quite a while to, to do this thing. And then it just it just kind of fell apart. It didn't quite work out. Um, but there, there was, there's another reality. Wait, 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 but there's wait, wait, like wait. an Anna. Real quick, uh, yo, yo, Anna fuck you. Game. What a cool thing that would have been for me. <laughs> I'd be getting, if that game's great, I'm getting all the flowers. You know what I mean? I'd be the new Shannon Woodward. Exactly. I'd be now Shannon, Shannon Woodward. Woodward. Oh, I emailed Craig and Neil. I made all this happen. <laughs> That's so I, I loved the the just the beautiful thematic relevance of Ellie literally being born into violence. You know, we talk about her being born in a violent world in this different time, but literally her, her coming out was like the push was almost from her uh, mom, like having to kill uh, infected right, right then. It was like that was just such a. A, a, a deep visual to me like i think that's gonna sit with me for a long time and just the you know the the poetic beauty of that it was ashley johnson yeah and uh, yeah. how amazing ashley johnson like she just crushed it. it neil i feel like for season one of last of us on hbo you've talked a lot about it you got the at the end of the hbo show you got the podcast with troy which has been great you and craig uh, and troy then you've got also like the playstation uh, directors or deal makers creator not, to creator creator my apologies my apologies uh what i mean because we're winding down here obviously what is what haven't you been asked about i always feel like you know for me personally there's always when i get interviewed or talk to somebody about something there's like something i hope people will ask and then they don't and i never get around to actually telling that is there something like that even though you've talked this to death 
that you think about with The Last of Us on HBO? I don't think so. No, nothing's coming to mind because yeah. people just have asked a lot of like. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking about this for a long time. A lot of alien questions. I get um, if you want to just a, I mean a softball that I don't hear like again like you know you're. I, people are people and everybody's just a person i get all that shit and you're you know definitely just one of us you're just a gamer and granted you make some of the best games of all time and yada yada, yada but whenever you and me hang out or i run you like we're just people was, was there a moment where you had to like calm down when you're hanging out with pedro pascal like you know what i mean like when you meet him for the first time when you meet bella i mean who's obviously young and up and coming but i mean game of thrones like such a breakout role for her was there a moment where you had to nerd out with all of them or was it always just like oh hello i'm neil i made the game i'm very cool i'm writing the show no big deal I'm going I, to the I Grove. Um, I, I was a big fan of I, I of both of the, them. You know, um, I think I would have been maybe more nervous meeting Pedro if he wasn't so down to earth. Uh, and and I think just the first time we hung out, we just kind of shot the shit and talked crap about some people that we know and from similar circles and old projects that you know things we would have done differently or whatever. Um, and it just felt like another geek that cares about story and characters and we could just kind of sit down and just talk uh and that's the thing when you do this like long enough you realize oh we we put up all these people on pedestals but they're just yeah. people um they're just nerds like all of us you know just trying to make cool stuff and sometimes you get lucky and it you know becomes popular culture and it goes, goes really broad but it really is um often right place right time uh, last question I have for you um, that I, I should have asked earlier, but the opening scene of, of this episode, we see this farmhouse, we see a tractor outside, and all <laughs> of a sudden I'm like, whoa, is, are, are they tying this into the end of part two? And like that wouldn't really make sense, um, or maybe it will, I don't know. But uh, even going in, it was one of those moments where I'm like, is this the same house? Like, is this the same design? Are those connected at all, Neil? Mm. Uh, we were watching it last night with Shannon Woodward and Shannon made the same observation like oh my god it's the same architecture as the, the farmhouse like did you guys do that on purpose I'm like uh, no <laughs> it just happened <laughs> like because geographically it doesn't make sense one's in Boston one's in Colorado um, no it was just we, we kind of wrote into the script as this like the farmhouse and the, the, the set designer production designer designed it that way I was back to yeah, it was back to the shadowy figure running away where I was like, all right, guys, I think we're reaching. Like it's yeah. not exactly the same farmhouse. Yeah, there's a tractor and it's a farmhouse, but it's a farmhouse. But inside it looked there, it was a little like, more. Um, there's this great thing that happens, you know, when, when you have enough things running in parallel, when you have enough setups and payoffs, then people start seeing them where they don't <laughs> exist. And you I remember with stars. the first game, there was something that like I don't remember the exact line, but uh, Ellie said something late in the story that Joel said earlier. And people were like, oh, my God, it's so brilliant. She's, like, taking on his mannerism, and she's starting to speak like him. I'm like, no, they're actually both just kind of speaking like me, and I didn't pay attention that I wrote the same line. For both <laughs> but, yeah, that's awesome. That's totally so thought that way the whole time. You just got to take credit. Like, you should, like <laughs> for that one, you should have been like, oh, yeah, that's where Ellie was born, and that's where eventually her soul is going to die. <laughs> <laughs> like, the connective tissue is there. <laughs> Neil, thank you so much for joining oh, us I, today. Okay, one thing. No, one, no one's asked this yet. Um, no one asked about the song that Anna sings to uh, the baby. Oh. And I, don't, I don't think if enough people paid attention to it because it's, it's very soft when, when um, uh, Marlene comes in and you can just hear her singing the song uh, and, it's, and it's, a, it's, a, it's another aha song um, that I just loved. So there was an oh. opportunity to get Which one is it? Uh, the Sun Always Shines on TV. Okay. There you yeah. go. There you go go take that headline vgc I love it, I love it. uh neil thank you for hanging out with us today thank you for for working on the show and the games and for for everything uh is there any parting words you have and where can people find you oh uh well first of all congrats to you guys and all your success and it's been fun watching you all so thank you for you know being good friends and just being uh pleasant fans to follow um where can people find me I, i'm on twitter and instagram although i'm gonna try to get off of social media now that the, the show is done and um, oh, here we go it. fucking hollywood Druckman. you know what i mean i'm gonna have to go through an assistant to talk to him now this sucks <laughs> <laughs> he deserves look, it Craig. Uh, convince, look, convince playstation to do another psx and i will be there in a heartbeat God, Not live peace. at the Shrine Theater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Neil. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you thought of season one of The Last of Us, what you hope we get in season two and beyond. And God. until next time, always look for the light.